if you remember, we were in numbers 33. We actually had two parts, two lessons already. And would you believe we are still on numbers 33 verse 1. And let me read verse 1. These are the journeys of the children of Israel who went out of the land of Egypt by their armies under the hand of Moses and Aaron. I praise God. We have two recordings that we already went through just explaining this verse. And that today we're going to learn more. And we're going to learn a clearer journey how and what does it mean when God says that the journey of the children of Israel will have to go out of the land of Egypt. We learned from our two previous lessons that, that Abraham had two seeds. He had two children, one born in the physical, one born in the spirit. And here the Lord makes it clear that it is only the spiritual children of God. They will be the only ones who can make it to God's kingdom. And how do we identify them? Because they have made a journey out of Egypt. Okay, normally when you just have your natural mind, you read this. This is just history. You don't even know what is the relevance of you telling me that the uh, spiritual children of Abraham had to leave Egypt. What we are going to find out is that what God has laid in the Old Testament is still applicable to us in the New Testament today. Okay, so what we learned from our past lesson is that to be able to leave Egypt, it says there that we can only leave it through the hand of Moses and Aaron, meaning we found out that Moses was a prophet, Aaron was a high priest. So in other words, the children of Israel could not have left Egypt apart from God having sent a prophet to lead them out of Egypt. And so we had already finished the role of the prophet, the, the role of the king. And then now what we are going to learn is the third ministry of one who can complete the journey from Egypt to the promised land or to heaven is to have a high priest. And so we find the instructions about the high priest in Numbers 18, verses 1 to 3. And let me read. And then the Lord said to Aaron, You and your sons and your father's house with you shall bear the iniquity related to the sanctuary. And you and your sons with you shall bear the iniquity associated with your priesthood. Also bring with you your brethren of the tribe of Levi, the tribe of your father, that they may be joined with you and serve you while you and your sons are with you before the tabernacle of witness. They shall attend to your needs and all the needs of the tabernacle, that they shall not come near the articles of the sanctuary and the altar, lest they die, they and you also. What is this verse telling us? First, we know that Aaron was the high priest in the Old Testament who was the only one who can come into the most holy place of the physical tabernacle, most holy place representing the very house of God and the very presence of God. Only Aaron could get in there once a year. And then his sons were the only ones of, of the tribe of Levi who can get in the tabernacle up to the holy place, okay? What is the relevance of this to you and me? First, why could Aaron be the one to do it? What I learned there is that he became qualified as a because he bore the iniquity related to the sanctuary. So, so that was all I focused on was the iniquity, the sanctuary, and then the priesthood. Those are the only three keywords that we are going to study that will give us an idea 
what does God want to convey with us from this verse? Uh, the Lord revealing to me the meaning of the iniquity. I got so excited. I got one unveiling upon the other so that the Lord made me go back to review the journey of man from the very beginning. With this lesson today, we are going to see clearly where we are going to see the priest, the king, and the high priest. Okay, how is it really? to the journey of man. So the Lord said, oh, go back to the journey and review them by giving them the overview of the whole journey of man from beginning to end. This is where we really start understanding what does bearing the iniquity referring to the sanctuary means. Okay? So in other words, the high priest can never get inside the sanctuary of God unless he bore the iniquity. That's why we are going to see today the relevance of that verse that we just studied. How is it relevant to your life and mine today? Our journey for all of mankind, the journey of mankind is to go on a journey from Egypt to heaven. Lahat tayo alam natin yan. We were created to go to heaven, okay? But as we get to know the Bible, there is no way we can get to heaven apart from us studying God's word where it is in his word that God gave us the specific instructions how for us to make it to heaven. And so you see, God speaks in figurative language. We are even going to learn later that everything in the Old Testament will only be made clear if we are able to connect it to the new. I'll, I'm going to show that later to you via the diagrams and how God would show us how to connect it later. But for us to have a better understanding, for the moment, we have to understand that when God talks about Egypt, he's talking about the earth. Like I said, God talks in figurative language. He's talking, see, everything is a secret, but He is revealing it as today. So when he's talking about Egypt, he means the earth. And every single man on earth existing alive has been born in iniquity, meaning we were all born in sin because we all came from Adam who sinned in the Garden of Eden. God specifically said, Adam, of every tree in the garden you may eat except for one fruit of a certain tree you may not eat because at the moment that you eat it, you will surely die. That is what iniquity, that is what sin did. Because Adam sinned, the Spirit of God in man died. So therefore, you will see his heart, it's black. And this is what we inherited. And because of this iniquity, we are only destined towards one direction. And what is that? We are all going through judgment. And we know from Genesis, man has to face two judgments. The judgment of water we saw in the flood where all of the world perished through the flood. And the other judgment is the judgment of fire, which is the eternal lake of fire pictured in the fire burning of Sodom and Gomorrah. Just to show us a picture that that is the end that's waiting for man. But we saw the role of the high priest. We are learning how to journey from Egypt to the promised land. We are now on the priest. For us to be able to go to heaven, somebody has to bear that iniquity. Somebody has to carry that sin. And the only way for man to get out from earth to go to heaven is for the high priest. We see here the only eligible high priest who could bear the iniquity of man is Jesus who was crucified on the cross. So here we see that man's heart is physical, and it is only through crucifixion, putting to death the physical heart, so that our hearts will be transferred to become a spiritual heart. And when we were reading about the sanctuary in Numbers 18, verse 1, God can only work with man's heart. Because after God has started his work on man's heart that is the only place 
where God can make his sanctuary while we are still on earth. In other words, the only way God can dwell with man while we are still alive is for man to have a new heart, a heart that is no longer flesh, that is born in iniquity. It has to join Jesus in death by the crucifixion of the cross so that now we have a new heart which is a spiritual heart. Only way God can dwell with man is when man's heart has been made a spiritual heart. That is what we are going to find out. How can this heart that's full of iniquity be changed to the sanctuary of God, which is heaven? Okay, that's what we are learning. The Bible has two books, the Old Testament and the New Testament. You cannot just read the Old Testament or just read the New Testament. You have to have the understanding of both the Old Testament and the New Testament because God, even as early as Old Testament, the pattern that he wants us to learn is exactly the same pattern as in the Old, except that in the Old, they still have to wait for the one who has to bear the iniquity, and that is Jesus, to die before they can transfer to the spiritual land that is heaven. And so God showed us in the book of Exodus, which is the book of exit. The book of Genesis is the book of beginnings. The book of Exodus is the book of exit <laughs> because we have to exit Egypt. And so uh, the book has uh, 40 plus chapters to show us the very details how to undergo that exit. Okay, so we see that man's heart, when you are still in Egypt or on earth, is still in iniquity. So the way we can go to the promised land is via the wilderness. They had 40 years in the wilderness to go to the promised land. First of all, we saw, if you read the book of Exodus, that the Israelites were in Egypt for 430 years under bondage to Pharaoh. If Egypt is the earth, and we know that the ruler of the earth is Satan, Pharaoh is the type of Satan who is the ruler of Egypt. Just so you know it, when you read Exodus, it's talking about Pharaoh, he symbolizes Satan. And so God had to use a prophet to be able to deliver the chosen people or the children of Abraham who were his spiritual seed to be able to get out of Egypt. What is the difference between just a regular anybody or a prophet? A prophet is one who has been prepared by God. A prophet is one who has direct communication with God, who can talk to God, who can hear God, so that everything that the prophet would do and say in delivering the people out of Egypt, it comes directly from God. I'm going to have the verses there, but I'm not going to go to the verses yet. What we will do is that we, you will have a copy of all of these verses. After our lesson, you go through all of these verses so that you will learn for yourself how Moses was directed by God himself to go to Egypt to be able to deliver the Israelites from their bondage to Pharaoh in Egypt. That is the work of a prophet. Like I said, we cannot leave Egypt unless we have a prophet, a king, and a priest. We have to have the office of all three to be able to reach the promised land. So Moses was the one sent by God, talked to Pharaoh to deliver them from Egypt to go to the promised land. And then the way to the promised land was via the wilderness. There's no other way. We have to go via the wilderness. And we know if you read the book of Exodus, they went through the wilderness for 40 years. What is there in the wilderness that we go through? In the wilderness is where we have the trials, we have the tribulations, we have all the different sufferings. Why? Because in the wilderness, we have to understand that we have to go through war. In the Old Testament, the war was between the sons of God and the sons of men. 
poor day, makikita mo, sino yung sons of God? Sila yung sinama ni Moses from out of Egypt, the spiritual children of God. Actually, from the very beginning, even when God first created Adam, Adam had two sons. One was representing the son of God, the other was representing the son of man. Abel was the son of God, Cain was the son of man. But Cain killed Abel, so God changed Abel. He made another seed through Seth. So makikita mo, even Isaac had two seeds, Esau and Jacob. One was representing the son of God, that's Jacob. And then Esau was the one representing the son of man. So we always see two seeds, okay? So yung generation ni Abraham coming from the spiritual seed, where it's called the spiritual seed because that's where Jesus would eventually come out from. So sila ngayon yung naglalaban. So in other words, it's like the ites and the Jews. So that was what the war was the whole time. And we know that sa gera, dapat merong king na leader ng gera. And in the beginning, God did not give the Israelites a king because God wanted to be their king. But they insisted on having a king because they wanted to be like the other ites who had a king who would lead them in the army. So eventually, just a shortcut, God gave them King David to be their king. So it's through King David na na-unite yung Israelites. That's why finally they were able to go to Canaan where they were able to conquer all of the ites under the rulership of David. And then David had a son who was Solomon. And it was through Solomon that he was the kingdom was still united. And once they get to the promised land, you see there that They got to the promised land all right, but they cannot yet go to heaven. Why? Because the heart is still in iniquity. It's not enough that the iniquity was carried. To begin with, meron pang iniquity. So hindi pa siya pwedeng pupunta sa heaven. Why? Because it is only the blood of the Lamb that covered their sins. So it was only for a temporary covering. Well, first of all, we see that once they get to Canaan, it, later on it was called Jerusalem. And what God was after was God was wanting to show them that in Canaan, in the promised land, will be set up the temple, which will eventually be the picture, picture of the sanctuary of God. Because when they were in the promised land or in Jerusalem, there was only one place of worship. All the other uh, places of worship were not allowed by God. Only one place of worship, and that is in the temple that was built by Solomon. That was called the sanctuary of God. But it was only a physical sanctuary. That's why once they, once they got to the promised land, it was still on earth. See, Canaan was still on earth. So in other words, temporary lang yung pagkaka-cover nila ng kanilang sin. Hindi pa sila makakapunta sa heaven kasi hindi pa sila nakalipat sa heart na malinis na. Kaya nga nakita mo, yung heart nila, once they got to Canaan, it was still in iniquity. There was only a covering. Kasi ang covering dyan, yun lang temporary covering was the shedding of the blood of the animal. Because for the iniquity to be taken out, kailangan this heart will have to bleed. But since there was still no one to carry that iniquity, if this particular heart dies now, it will already have to meet the judgment in hell, the judgment of water and judgment of fire. Even after the journey from Egypt to the promised land, it was still a physical, but God was already showing us that in the physical, see, God has to give us the New Testament for us to sh- for us to see in the physical what God would show us in the spiritual. Because in the spiritual, God would still use the same thing, the prophet, the king, and the priest. So ang role ng prophet is the person who hears from God. Ang role ng king is to be the leader of the war. But the king cannot lead apart from him having a high priest. 
because a high priest is one who will intercede, who will bear the iniquity. Kinocover kasi itong high priest na to will perform rites. He will kill a lamb that will temporarily cover the iniquity. Kasi yung iniquity, ang ibig sabihin, may galit si God. After that sin, grabe yung enmity, yung galit ni God sa sinner. Ganyan na lang. It's only when I was studying it some more, studying it some more that I realized, sabi ko, grabe pala ang ginawa ng sin ng man. Talagang sobrang galit ni God sa sin. That is only going to show you why it needed a prophet because what prophet is one who can talk to God. A king is the one who can lead the war but this king will have to have a high priest who has a direct contact with God and who has performed the rituals in the church to temporarily cover the iniquity. Kailangan ma-cover, matakpan yung iniquity para matanggal ang galit ni God so that they will win the war. Okay? Like for King David, he cannot just go a cappella, yung walang guidance from the high priest kung kailan nila gagirahin ito, kung kailan muna sila magre-retreat. So, they were always working hand in hand with the priest. Kaya yung king, maski nung paiba-ibang king, parati yan may kapartner na priest or prophet. Priest and prophet, kapartner ng king. Okay? The king cannot work solo. So in other words, itong king, hindi siya nakakarinig kay God. Yung prophet lang at saka high priest ang nakakarinig. So, ang pag obra ng king under the direction of the prophet and the high priest. So what happened was, in the Old Testament, I said that they were just covered. Meron pang iniquity yung kanilang heart. Now you will get to understand the cities of refuge. What happened pala in the Old Testament was that God had to delay their judgment. All of our patriarchs who died in the Old Testament, they did not go directly to judgment. God prepared six cities of refuge. You see there the picture of the cities of refuge? Three in the west, three in the east. Yung west, all of the Old Testament patriarchs, they were instructed, those who had faith, they had to be buried in the three cities of refuge. If you see, crossing the river Jordan is going to the promised land. So the west of the promised land is where all of the Old Testament patriarchs were buried. Temporary covering while they were waiting for the death of the high priest. Because it is the high priest who would bear the iniquity or the sins of all of our patriarchs who died in faith. Before, I thought the cities of refuge was just for Old Testament people. Hindi pala. Kaya nga, there were six cities of refuge because six signifies man. But we know that the journey of man is always divided into three. Three days. So, kaya nga, yung three cities of refuge were for the Old Testament saints and the three cities of refuge were for the New Testament saints. That is us. Sila, yung temporarily covering nila from judgment, yung cities of refuge kung saan sila nilibing. Tayo, ang ating covering dito sa east. Kaya nga nakita mo yung ano yung entrance ng Tabernacle 4, yung uh, sanctuary ni God. We have been learning Tabernacle 4. Ang entrance nun is east, di ba? Kaya nga yung cities of refuge in the east, that is now the picture of Tabernacle 4 na kung saan ngayon ang New Testament saints, pag namatay, dyan tayo nakatago yung tabernacle for until we meet God's judgment. Grabe yan yung bagong unveiling sa akin. In the Old Testament, remember, the Old, the Old Testament uh, saints were under the monergistic covenant, meaning God fulfilled or the requirements of the law so that they will not be judged. It's only temporary pala yung monergistic. They had to wait for the crucifixion of Jesus so that once Jesus was risen, nabuksan yung graves ng mga lahat ng mga Old Testament saints na nakalibing dito sa tatlong cities of refuge, kasabay ni Jesus pumunta sa first heaven ng Tabernacle 4 to get their judgment before kasabay ni Jesus umakyat. Umakyat sila pero hanggang doon lang sila sa covering ng cities of refuge ng east. Nandun lang sila sa hanggang sa Tabernacle 4 lang. Jesus went up to sit 
on the right hand of the Father dun sa New Jerusalem. In other words, the Old Testament saints, temporary lang yung monergistic. Ang monergistic, God fulfilling all the covenants. Kailangan kasi ang covenants always dalawa. So that after Jesus' death, they had to join Jesus on His resurrection, dun na yung kanilang synergistic. So, ang synergistic was, when did they join the synergistic? The synergistic was when Jesus was on the ground three days. After Jesus died, He was on the ground three days because it has to take the Trinity three days to prepare the ground. Kasi on the ground, what happened was, Jesus had to take the curse of sin. He had to take care of the forgiveness of sin and the penalty of sin, which is hell. Hindi pala enough that Jesus will just take the iniquity. Kasi pala tatlong portions ang kailangan babayaran sa ground. Yung ating heart, because of the iniquity, it is under a curse. Meaning, when God cursed the ground, when God cursed Adam because of his sin, sabi niya, Adam, you are going to die. So that is the first thing that Jesus did. On the cross, when Jesus died, He took our death. So after Jesus died, His heart was pierced. And when His heart was pierced, Water and blood came out to go to the ground. Yun na yung next work ng Trinity. The water that came out, yun na yung Holy Spirit na maghuhugas ng ating sin to take care of the forgiveness of our sins. And then the blood, yun na yung God the Father who is the fires from heaven will go down. Inignite for the very first time yung fire sa hell so that si Jesus ang unang nakatake ng judgment ng hell. So yun yung tatlong judgment. So yung tatlong ginawa ni Jesus, work ng Trinity yun to make the synergistic covenant. So dyan nag-join ngayon, di ba yung na- nakalibing sa ground yung Old Testament says, dyan sila ngayon nag-join kay Jesus. Because in Jeremiah 31 verses 32 to 34, our Old Testament patriarch, sabi niya, they were not able to obey the covenant, the monergistic covenant that they had that they had with God, sabi niya, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant which they broke. So see, God made a covenant with them but they broke that covenant. Diyan mo makikita na hindi po pwede yung monergistic. Kailangan synergistic covenant. That's why they had to wait until Jesus had to die. Sabi niya, my covenant with them, they broke, although I was a husband to them. From the very beginning that God created man, that's why He created man and a woman. God created man pala to be the bride of Christ. So from the very beginning, dyan pala, even our Old Testament patriarchs, they were intended to be the bride of Christ, but they broke the covenant with God. So anong sabi niya? But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds. Do you see? I always say that the sanctuary of God is in the heart. Yung heart natin, kailangan si God ang magpe-prepare. Ang contents kasi ng heart, the heart is where the intellect, the will, and the emotions are housed in the heart of man. So kaya nga itong new covenant, sabi niya, I will put my law in their minds. Ano 'yun? Yung ating mind pag dinemolish na ni Lord, papalitan niya ng new mind. Work ni Jesus 'yun because it required Jesus's death to change our minds from the mind na physical to the spiritual mind. Sabi niya, I will write it on their hearts. Ano yan? The intellect, that's the will. Because when God writes His law, see, we have to come to the end of the law. Yun yung hindi natin naintindihan in the past. Jesus came to the end of the law. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Kailangan na mamatay yung flesh to come to the end of the law. Kasi unless you come to die in the flesh, you are only obeying the Ten Commandments. You can never come to heaven if all you do is to obey the Ten Commandments. Because it's not enough na yung iniquity mo lang ang cover. Ang kailangan, you have to change 
seed. Kailangan mapalitan yung iyong heart. Yung heart natin galing sa seed ni Adam, cap small letter S, kailangan mapalitan ng capital letter S na seed ni God. Ano yun? May bagong mind, may, may bagong intellect, may bagong will, may bagong emotions when we have a new heart. That's the composition of the new covenant. I will put my laws in their minds. That's the intellect. I will write it on their hearts. That's the will. That's the new will. I will be their God. That is now our new emotions. So ano yan? Work ng Trinity. Yung curse kinuha ni Jesus by His death. Yung write it in their hearts, that's the forgiveness of sin para mabago ngayon yung loss sa ating heart. Holy Spirit's work yun yung hinugasan yung yung tubig na naghugas ng ground na karga-karga ni Jesus yung ating sin and then I will be their God God the Father who is the fires from heaven will go down to ignite the fires below so jaan for the very first time na sindihan ang hell until Jesus died I said, the cities of refuge, hinold ni God yung judgment. Wala mo nang, hindi pa, hindi pa naka-on yung apoy sa hell. Unang sinindihan yung hell nung bumaba si Jesus sa cross. Kasi dyan niya binayaran yung sin ng man. Na tatlo yung babayaran ni Jesus. Ganun pala kagrabe yung sin natin. Hindi lang ganun-ganun yun. Okay? Um, until you know this, When you go through the wilderness, when you go through trials, you will keep complaining. Because what we do not understand is what Jesus went through to, to take care of the sin that we have. I am just explaining to you that the Old Testament sins, they were not able to fulfill the covenant that yung kanila monergistic lang. They had to join Jesus on the ground, meaning they, eh, nung namatay sila, tinakpan lang sila nitong cities of refuge. Okay? Until Jesus died, nilinisan yung ground kung saan sila nakalibing. And so that's why they were risen with Jesus. And then in Hebrews 9, verse 27 to 28, it says, It is appointed for men to die once, and after that the judgment. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many, and to those who eagerly wait for Him, He will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. So when Jesus Christ died, What happened was, He just took the iniquity of our sins. Binuran niya yun. Kaya nga, when we leave Egypt, we are now justified, we are holy. It's still not yet enough to go to heaven. Kasi we have to be, we have to wait for Jesus to appear a second time. When will Jesus appear a second time? On His resurrection. Kasi when His resurrection, bayad na yung ating sin, doon lang siya papasok sa sanctuary kasi nakarga na yung ating iniquity. Para ganun, pwede na tayong umalis ng Egypt dahil nabura na yung ating iniquity pero kailangan pa rin tayong pumunta sa ground dahil kailangan tayo ngayon masanctify. Okay? Now, I just want to show you Exodus 5 verse 3 just to show you na the God of the Hebrews has met with us Please let us go three days journey into the desert and sacrifice to the Lord our God lest He fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. So what is the wilderness? The wilderness is a three-day journey not only for the Old Testament saints in three days nila, just as cities of refuge, when they join Jesus sa death, sa baba, tayo din, three days ang journey natin, pero tayo, we are journeying while we are still alive. Bakit? Kasi si Jesus na matay na, kineri na niya yung ating iniquity, pero it's not enough that yung iniquity natin na carry, kailangan we have to join Him in the synergistic covenant. We have to join Him on the ground by dying to the flesh. Okay? We have to join Him sa baba by dying to the flesh so that we are going to join Him in His resurrection. We are going to meet Jesus in the first heaven for our lesser judgment. What happens is, if we die to the flesh, see, it's destined for man to die once. Meaning, it's either you die once or you die twice. 
if you die once today, meaning kailangang mamatay yung fleshly heart mo today, you are going to be risen from the dead dito sa baba. So that ma-unveil si Jesus. On His resurrection, nalinisan na yung aking heart. Okay, I'll show that. If you see this tabernacle, we, we said that this tabernacle is the sanctuary. If you see here, this is the outer court. Outer court is, you see, the brazen altar, the water laver. And then when you come to the holy place, may veil dyan, yung veil, yung violet. And then may veil din dito sa susunod to the holy place, there is a thick veil. What I want to show you is that in the Old Testament, the reason for this veil here is to let you, you and I know that we do not have any access to the presence of God in the Old Testament. Kasi meron yan veil, yung priest lang, at saka high priest ang pwedeng pumasok dyan. It had to take the crucifixion of Jesus para mapunit itong veil na yan. Do you see the veil now there? It took the crucifixion of Jesus to tear this veil. Okay? That's why when Jesus Christ died, His heart was pierced. Parallel yan nung veil na napunit. Yung sanctuary, yung sanctuary yan ang tabernacle. Napunit yung veil, napunit yung heart ni Jesus. Ngayon, para ikaw, ma maiintindihan mo ang Bible, kailangan mapunit din yung ating heart kasabay nung pagkakapunit nung heart ni Jesus para yung lahat ng laman ng iniquity ng heart ko bababa sa ground, masasabay paghugas ng, ng kasabay ng tubig at dugo na lumabas sa heart ni Jesus sa cross, kasabay ng aking blood na bumaksak sa ground. So ipapakita dyan, kung napunit yung veil na yan, para mabuksan yung sanctuary, makapasok doon sa most holy place, yan ang what we are calling unveiling. Kaya nga makikita mo, kung binasa mo lang ang Old Testament, hindi mo maiintindihan. Kung binasa mo lang ang New Testament, hindi mo maiintindihan. Kailangan, ma ito yung sanctuary, di ba sabi natin, binasa natin. Kung hindi mo alam na the sanctuary, God gave the picture of the tabernacle because this is gonna be His sanctuary. Yung sanctuary ni Lord, yan ang ating puso. Kaya niya binigay yung picture ng sanctuary kay Moses para ipakita yung picture ng puso mo at puso ko na kung ano ang mangyayari dyan sa sanctuary, ganyan ni Lord nililinis ang puso. Okay? So napunit yung veil na yan nung napunit yung heart ni Jesus. For you and I, Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. So nung napunit yung puso mo at puso ko, ano ang mangyari? We join Jesus dun sa una. Yung curse ng sin. Hindi, yun na yung aking death. That's the first death. Judgment na yung susunod. It, it, I have to die today so that I will not die a second death when I die again. Kasi if I die today, ma, meron akong covering eh. Yung covering na, itong covering ng cities of refuge. Nag, eh, all of those who join Jesus on the ground Dito sa three days on the ground, they have a refuge. In the same way na yung Old Testament, ang refuge nila, yung tatlong cities of refuge, tayo ngayon, when I die, ang refuge ko, yung three days ko dito sa ground, I am going to be recent a new creation. So that when I go through my judgment to sa first seven, hindi ako masusunog. Bakit? Hindi ako masusunog kasi yung puso ko malinis na. Kaya lang ang puso masusunog dahil meron pang iniquity. The reason Jesus died first was that He took my iniquity. Kaya pwede na akong umalis ng Egypt. But I still have go here on the cities of refuge. So meron akong covering pagdating ng aking end. Do you understand? That's why it's destined for man to die once and after that the judgment. So after I die once, I am going to wait now for salvation. Kaya nga yung salvation only happens in tabernacle number four. So I just showed you this picture of the tabernacle just to show you that it is only when this veil is torn, doon ka lang magkakaroon ng unveiling. Kaya nga sabi mo, bakit ako basa na ng basa ng Bible, hindi ko maintindihan? Napunit na ba yung puso mo sa trials? 
mararamdaman mo pag napunit yung puso because your heart is gonna go through demolition. Pag napunit na yung heart na yan, hindi ka nagreklamo, binasa mo yung Bible, naintindihan mo, mabubuksan ng Bible. Sina punit yung veil nung namatay si Jesus? Ang sabi natin, itong tabernacle na ito ay ang sanctuary ni God, tahanan ni Lord, pwede lang niya yan pananahanan pag napunit na yung veil ng iyong puso. Kasi yung veil na iyong puso, puro maduming kasalanan yan, hindi pwedeng manahan si Lord yan. So, when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, paano mananahan si Lord yung veil mo, hindi pa punit? Meaning, puro pang kasalanan yan. Nung si Jesus na matay sa cross, binayaran lang niya yung kasalanan, pero hindi siya pwedeng papasok dyan kasi kailangan bago yung puso. Pag napunit na itong puso yan, okay, ang next niyan, huhugasan pa for the forgiveness of sin do sa baba. Tapos susunugin pa yung pusong old heart na yan. Bago siya mabibago ka mabigyan ng new heart. Kasi kailangan yung work ng Trinity. Jesus took the curse, napunit yung puso, Holy Spirit, yung tubig, huhugasan yung pusong napunit, and then susunugin. Okay, ano yung hinuhugas pag napunit yung puso? Pag nasugatan yung puso mo, paano ang paghugas? Lahat ng idols ng puso mo palalabasin ni Lord. Ano yun? Yung lahat ng inibig mo, lahat ng treasures na pinanghawakan mo, lahat yun kailangang i-lay down. Si Lord ang kukuha nun masakit. Pero pag nagreklamo ka, paikot-ikot ka sa wilderness. Pero oras na tinatanggal lahat yung idols na yan, sobrang sakit para kang mamamatay. You have to thank God when you know the word. Pag na-unveil, Sabihin mo, Lord, yung belo ng aking mga mata, tinatanggal mo para ikaw makita ko at maintindihan ko yung iyong salita. Today, I'm only, going, I'm only giving you an overview na ito ang dinadaanan ng heart. Bakit ka dumadaan ng trials? Bakit ka dumadaan ng sakit? Bakit dumugo yung puso mo? Kasi yung belo ng puso ng tabernacle, pinakita na ni Lord ang picture na in the Old Testament, napunit yung veil. Nung napunit yan, sinira na yan. Hindi na yan kailangan ang tabernacle na yan. Kaya nga, when Jesus died, nakita mo, sabi niya, sirain na ninyo yung templo ng Jerusalem. Hindi na kailangan yan. Kasi may itatayo na akong bagong templo. Ano yun? Yung bagong templo niya, saan na ngayon itatayo? Dito na sa puso natin. Kasi yung puso niya, it's only to give us a picture. Na kailangan punitin yung veil ng temple na yan on the crucifixion of Jesus na punit yung veil. Para ganon ngayon, nabayaran na yung inyong kasalanan, you can now join me in death. Bayad na yung kasalanan nyo, pwede na kayong umalis ng Egypt. In the Old Testament, nakita mo, nakarating sila sa promised land, nakaalis ba sila sa Egypt? Hindi. Dahil yung promised land at Canaan, earth pa rin yun. They had to wait in the cities of refuge for the crucifixion of Jesus to be risen from the dead. It is no different from your life and mine where we still have to join Jesus on the ground in the cities of refuge. Although ngayon ang refuge natin nasa tabernacle for na kasi tapos na yung pagbabayad ni Jesus ng ating kasalanan, pwede nang paduguin yung puso natin ngayon, pwede nang patayin. In the Old Testament, hindi pa pwede patayin yung puso nila kasi hindi pa nababayaran yung sin nila kaya tinatakpan lang ng dugo ng animal para hindi muna sila papatayin ng Avenger. Sino yung Avenger of God? Si God the Father yun. Hinold ng God the Father yung judgment ng hell. Kaya nga yung God the Father na, na fires above, hindi pa niya sinindihan yung impyerno. Sinindihan lang niya yung impyerno nung namatay si Jesus kasi si Jesus yung unang susunugin sa impyerno. Kaso si Jesus hindi siya masusunog. Kasi ang nasunog lang yung karga-kargang kasalanan ni Jesus. Si Jesus mismo, yung puso niya, hindi pwedeng mamamatay yun dahil yung puso ni Jesus was already holy and blameless without sin. Okay, this is now the New Testament journey. Okay? Makikita natin in the Old Testament ang prophet si Moses, ang king si David, ang high priest si Aaron. In the New Testament, we also have the prophet the king and the priest, except that the prophet, the king, and the priest is now Jesus. So in other words, it is only Jesus who can bring us out of the earth to be able to bring us inside God's sanctuary and 
when when God can now live in our hearts, we can be in one sanctuary with God in the New Jerusalem. First diagram here still in her, but this is the picture now of the journey of the spiritual heart. It's still the same, except that the wilderness in the Old Testament is the crucifixion in the New Testament. Okay, on the overall picture, it's just one day, one day, one day. But the journey later on, we will see in the next diagram, magiging set of three, three day journey, magiging three sets of three day journey each. So you see here on the earth, you see the diagram there na hindi pa punit yung veil. Yung veil intact pa, okay? Ang unang prophet na pinadala ni God sa New Testament, si John the Baptist. Si John the Baptist lang yung merong direct communication with God because he was the only one conceived who already had the Holy Spirit while he, he was still in the womb. So in other words, John the Baptist would be the only one who would recognize Jesus. So when John the Baptist was here, he had apostles already because he already has only the one who has the indwelling of the Holy Spirit can now be a light bearer or the one who can bring people from out of Egypt. Okay? So John the Baptist was the forerunner who had to prepare the way for Jesus. We're going to read all of those verses next week, but I pray that you read all of these verses ahead of time after our lesson. Okay? And then John the Baptist prepared the way so that when Jesus came, it was John the Baptist who pointed all of his disciples to Jesus. When he says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Na dati yung Lamb ni God was Lamb lang sa Old Testament. Ngayon, si Jesus na mismo who came from heaven is the Lamb of God who will be able to erase the iniquity of the sins of man that dati kinocover lang. Jesus is the only one who can tell us about God because he is the only one who saw God in heaven. So walang ibang nilalang sa buong mundo that can tell us about God himself, who can show us the glory of God except Jesus alone. That is why John chapter 1 verse 14 says, And the word meaning Jesus was made flesh and dwelt amongst us so that we will see the glory of God in Him. Siya lang yung merong glory ni God dahil nang galing siya sa heaven. Siya lang yung kasama ng God the Father sa heaven. Siya ang bumaba. If He did not go down, there is no way, no way possible we can ever even know God. Of course, Moses was able to talk to the Israelites then because God talked to him. But he has not really, you know, been with God. But Jesus has been with God. So siya talaga yung makaka, he was the only one who can have the disciples, who can tell his disciples about God. Of course, we know that even for his disciples then, who were with him three years, they still did not know God until after Jesus died. So kinailangan pa rin talaga yung death ni Jesus para mabuksan yung kanilang spiritual eyes para maintindihan nila yung words ni Jesus. So in other words, until the heart of Jesus was pierced and until their hearts were pierced, they could not see God, they could not hear God, they could not tell people about God. But those who have been through the same journey as Jesus, yan ay yung light bearers, yung nakapasok na sa tabernacle. Number four. And then this is the crucifixion. Jesus came down from heaven. He went through the cross. Now, He is the King. How do we know that? In Luke chapter 1, verses 32 to 33, you will see there that when Jesus was born, it says there that God gave Him the throne of his father, David. Grabe ang continuation ng scriptures. In the Old Testament, David was king. In Luke chapter 1, you read, it says there very clearly that God the Father gave Jesus the throne of his father, David. So si Jesus na ngayon ang magiging spiritual king who will now fight the battle for us. In the Old Testament, David was king kasi he was the one who fought the battle for the Jews. Sa atin today, 
Jesus is the one who's going to fight the battle for us. We are still in the same war as the war in the wilderness, except the war today is already between God and Satan. In the wilderness, the war was between the sons of God and the sons of man. The war today is between God and Satan. Kaya nga, in the first covenant, sabi ni God ki Adam, I will put enmity between you and the woman. Meaning, I am going to promise you my son. He's going to die for you. Para yung galit kontindi sa'yo, malilipat na between Satan and you. Ang kagalit mo na ngayon si Satan, hindi na ako bati na tayo dahil si Jesus mamamatay for you. That's what the first covenant is saying. Pero kalahati lang yun. Ano sabi niya? Between your seed, meaning between talking to Satan, between your seed and her seed, meaning si Jesus yon. So in other words, para matanggal ng kompleto yung enmity ko at makapasok ako sa tabernacle ni God, kailangan maging seed ako ng seed ni Mary na capital letter S na si Jesus. <laughs> maging same, maging brothers ako ni si Jesus. Kailangan I have to be the same spiritual seed ni Jesus. Okay? Yan yung Genesis 3.15. And then Ephesians 6.12, sabi niya, Your fight is no longer against flesh and blood. Ang away, bawa, meron ginagamit si Lord na tribulator sa puso mo, parati kang ginagalit. Huwag ka nang magalit dun sa tao. Yun dahil ang sabi ni God, ang gera, hindi na tao sa tao. Ang gera, ang kalaban mo si Satan. So kaya yan nakakainis dahil ginagamit ni Lord para, para i-pierce yung heart mo dahil yung ginagamit ni Lord na yan, tao pa ni Satan. Okay? So, pwede pa siyang gamitin ni Satan para itribulate ka. <laughs> Pero, si God ang nag-aalaw nun. So, kaya wag kang magalit dun sa tao yun. Magpasalamat ka kay God na si God pinipierce yung heart mo para ganun, dumugo na yung heart mo, malinisan na, mabuksan yung spiritual eyes mo to be able to understand God's word. Okay? So, instead of fighting against flesh and blood, you just praise God that God is working in your heart. God is just using that person. Okay? Si Satan, ang kalaban mo, hindi yung taong yan. Kasi si Satan, ginagamit yung taong yan. Eh, yung taong yan, wala pa siyang authority. Wala pa siyang capability to see. Kaya pa siyang magpagamit kay Satan. Kasi hindi pa niya nakilala si Lord eh. Hindi pa siya na-set free, nasa Egypt pa siya. That's what that is saying. Okay? And then, on the cross, God won the victory over Satan. You just read that in Ephesians 6 verse 10 uh, to 3 in Colossians 2.15. I pray that you read all of the verses that you are finding here and then review our lesson so that this will take root in your heart. And of course, Jesus is also now the high priest. On Jesus' resurrection, the first place that he went to was here. In um, brazen altar, you, you see here in the first heaven of tabernacle number four, which is now God's sanctuary. Kaya nakita mo yung heart, yung heart naging God's sanctuary na itong tabernacle four. Pumunta si Jesus dito sa brazen altar. Dito niya ngayon tayo aantayin on his resurrection. Dito niya inantay yung mga patriarchs. Para yung mga patriarchs, dito sila nasunog, dito sila nag-take ng kanilang judgment. Ang judgment nila fires above, dito na sa first seven, hindi na yung fires below. Kasi yung fires below, hindi na sila makakaalis dun eh. Yung una nilang fires do dahil meron silang covering, hindi sila nasunog, kaya umakyat sila dyan sa fires above. But for right now, si Jesus lang muna yung pumunta dito sa sanctuary. So Jesus' crucifixion, produce the seven furnitures that you see here in Tabernacle 4. When, in Genesis, when God created the first, second, and third heaven, walang furniture yan. Kaya wala pang makakaakyat dun, walang akyatan, walang hagdan. But on the cross, when Jesus uttered the seven last words, for every word that Jesus uttered, nagagawa yung bawat furniture. So that on His resurrection, may furniture na itong Tabernacle number 4. Binigay lang ni Lord yung picture dito sa physical tabernacle Pero yung talagang totoong heaven Wala pang furniture at that time Dito lang magkakaroon ng furniture sa After Jesus' resurrection Our final journey is leaving Egypt Nakita natin kanina Three days lang yung heading general But leaving Egypt 
yung details na ng living Egypt is three sets of three day journey. Three days ng justification, three days ng sanctification, three days ng glorification. Okay? So you just to get this diagram. For justification, we've already learned this. This is just a review. For justification, these are the trials that we go through to be able to leave Egypt. We go through famine, widow, alien. In our future lessons, I'm going to give all the scriptures so that you will understand all of this um, journey. So makita mo, this is the meaning of propitiation. What Jesus did on the cross was just pay for the propitiation of our sins. And the definition of propitiation is to satisfy the wrath of God against sin. To turn away God's wrath or to offer sacrifices that appeases God's just judgment and righteous anger against us and against sins. So in other words, when Jesus died on the cross, He paid for your justification. Ginawa ka niyang holy. Ibig sabihin niya, holy na small letter H. Ang ibig sabihin ng holy dito, set apart. Okay? And yung propitiation, kinarga lang niya yung sin mo in such a way na hindi nagalit si Lord sa'yo. Binayaran na niya yung iyong sin, kaya diniliver ka na niya from Satan. Meaning, pwede ka nang umalis ng Egypt. Hindi ka na nakatanikala sa demonyo kasi yung sins mo, binura na niya. Justified, holy. Pero hindi ka pa rin makakapasok sa heaven. Bakit? Yung puso natin, physical seed pa. Basta physical seed, hindi yan pwedeng papasok sa heaven. Kailangan spiritual seed. Kaya, what do you have to go through? You have to go through sanctification. Ano yung sanctification? You not only are holy, but you are also blameless. And to be holy and blameless, you have to go through the three-day journey where you have to join Jesus. Nung na-pierce yung heart ni Jesus, kasabay ng piercing ng heart mo, to, to take care of your second death. Ngayon ka na lang mamamatay. Once ka na lang mamamatay. Ngayon na lang. Hindi na yung pag namatay kang namatay ng hininga, matutulog ka lang sa abyss, magre-resurrect ka, maja-judge ka, only to go to hell, that's your second death. Pero pag namatay ka na ngayon today, you will only die once. And then after that, yung judgment mo dito na sa sanctuary number four. Yan ang ibig sabihin nun. You die once today, and your salvation happens in tabernacle number four. So hindi po pwedeng sabihin na, Tinanggap ko na si Jesus born again na ako. Hindi ka pa born again. You are just holy. You are justified. But you are not yet sanctified. You do not yet have a spiritual heart. So you're still gonna go to hell. Okay? So it's not enough na tinanggap mo si Jesus. <laughs> Kailangan yung heart mo will have to be the sanctuary of God. When you accepted Jesus as the Lord your Savior, do you think God will go inside? He cannot. Because your heart has not yet been prepared as God's sanctuary. The preparation of the heart to be God's sanctuary are these three things that has to go. Sa cities of refuge, preparation yun. Preparation yun cities of refuge to join Jesus in resurrection. Okay? So, I already went through a while, a while ago. The heart piercing. The heart has to be washed. Kaya nga purple heart because it's the work of the Holy Spirit. The water that flowed from the side of Jesus is the Holy Spirit that went to the ground to give the judgment of water to Jesus. Ang katapat niyan, yung idols ng puso na binubunod sa heart ko, masakit. Pero ang katapat naman si Jesus ang napunta sa judgment of waters below. Kumukulong tubig yan. So, magre-reklamo ka ba si Jesus ang nag-take ng heavier side ng judgment mo? It's a lighter punishment compared to hell and uh, ano, judgment of water below and judgment of fire. Ito ang nililigtas ni Lord sa atin para mapalitan yung, yung small letter S na physical heart to become a spiritual heart. Ang penalty ng sin is hell. Forgiveness of sin kung hindi ka ma-forgive, is a judgment of waters below. And then the curse is death. 
um, I guess this is already self-explanatory. Uh, just read the verses there. And then um, after you've been through the ground, you're going to be risen. You can now enter the uh, sanctuary number four. You have first to go to the brazen altar. You can go through the fires above and you will not die. Why? Because your sin has already been taken care of. Wala ka ng sin dyan. So in, hindi na masusunog yung puso mo kasi naubos na, nasunog na yung physical heart sa baba. This is only for your purification. Purification. Makikita mo later on, we can tie this up to the gifts of the three magi, which is gold, frankincense, and myrrh. You'll be amazed. It's also the work of the Trinity. It's amazing how everything is falling into place, all pointing to the three work of the Trinity. Even the gifts of the gold, frankincense, and myrrh is the work of God the Father, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus. It's amazing. We'll go to those in the future lessons. But I just want to finish our lesson here to show that because there are now seven furnitures, dito na natin maiintindihan yung festival of weeks when we go to the altar of incense. Basahin mo yung um, festival of weeks in Leviticus 23. You go to the festival of weeks. Doon yung seven times seven of 49. And when you come, the last furniture that you enter is the Ark of the Covenant when you can now be the the prophet, the priest, and the king, will you now become the sons of God where you are going to be the bride of Christ. That is the journey to become a priest. So kung si Jesus ang prophet, priest, and king, you, when you become the sons of God, you enter the Ark of the Covenant. Later, pag-aaralan natin yung tatlong laman ng Ark of the Covenant, you are now the prophet, you can now be the prophet, priest, and king. We'll learn all of those in our future lessons. Today, I only gave you a bird's eye view of the journey from Egypt, which is the earth, through the cross to go to heaven.